Situated behind me is the central issue of Israel's current election campaign. Shas, the center-right party, has said they'll refuse to sit in any government that is willing to compromise on Jerusalem. Since the war on Gaza, an entire rhetoric has developed within the Israeli election campaign of both military expansionism and anti-Arab sentiment, Palestinian political mobilization has been actively hampered by right-wing parties challenging uh, Palestinian-Israeli parties' legitimacy to contest in the elections. During the, the, the election campaign, the um, Israeli politicians are concurring between them uh, who is more racist against the Arabs. For example, uh, Libni, 10 days before the uh, war, was launched against Gaza, Libni has said the only solution for the uh, because of the Arabs, of course, the Arabs in Israel is the future state in, in uh, Gaza and, and the West Bank. So this means Libni wants to, to use transfer against one and a half million Palestinians living here. Uh, Netanyahu has said uh, uh, during the war, has said uh, the major danger for that Zionism is not Gaza, is not Hezbollah, is not Iran even. It's the Arabs living among us. So imagine to yourself, a uh, whole community here is living under these uh, 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 circumstances, living in fear that the Israeli, uh, uh, the Zionist movement, is attempting any second to take them and uh, uh, expel them from uh, their land. Yes, we are going against Lieberman, we are going against uh, Barak, we are going against Livni, and we are going against Netanyahu. And this is exactly what I told you in the beginning, that we believe the right and the left wing uh, in Israel, they are, they are both uh, Zionist in different ways, in different progr political programs, but they are both, uh, and all of them, against uh, uh, um, full rights for the Palestinians uh, inside Israel or in the West Bank and Gaza. None of them uh, has a real uh, program for peace. Uh, Barak and Livni, they are competing uh, who is more hard against Palestinians and they are using the Palestinian blood as a material for the elections. This is uh, true. And uh, for Netanyahu, uh, he is uh, very harsh and hard uh, and saying that if I will uh, when the elections, if I will be the Prime Minister, I will change the situation in Gaza. And uh, he uh, will not do anything different than what happened uh, before one month. W because uh, it is the same army uh, which attacked Gaza, and it is the same leadership. Kadima was in power and uh, was good only in expanding settlements and uh, was good only in making life of the Palestinians more difficult, which in turn contribute to radicalization in the Palestinian society. I think that uh, we need uh, different kind of parties because all the uh, main parties competing for elections in Israel are not candidates for a meaningful peace process, unfortunately. And this is the outcome of the radicalization of the society. The right of return, the self-determination, the uh, having a full independent sovereignty state on 1967. These, no political party till now, will agree for that. Uh, Lieberman uh, is saying new things. Lieberman is talking about uh, uh, getting rid of uh, Palestinians living in Israel. 20% of the Israelis are uh, actually of, of, of the citizens in Israel are Palestinians. It's not uh, uh, that he's different from the other parties, and this is uh, uh, Balad saying very uh, clear. The left, the Zionist left and the right-wing uh, Zionist in, in Israel are very similar. The different is the solution that they are giving. All, all parties think and believe that we are uh, a demographic bomb. The, the thing is the solution. Lieberman is saying that the solution is to transfer Palestinians uh, um, to the West Bank. I don't think uh, uh, the others in the Zionist movement uh, differ from this line. The only difference is Lieberman, maybe because he's uh, uh, stupid, maybe because it's his role. Uh, uh, he says it very, very openly. And the others do it, practice it, but without talking about that that loud, because they don't want uh, to make a bad 
uh, propaganda for the only democracy in the Middle East, uh, in the uh, public opinion, uh, in the Western world and in the whole world. Donate today and receive a new documentary film available to members of the Real News Network. The History of the National Security State with legendary author Gore Vidal. Bonus features of the DVD include an in-depth response to Vidal from ex-CIA analyst Ray McGovern, who served under seven U.S. presidents, an exclusive interview with Colin Powell's former chief of staff Larry Wilkerson, and an insightful interview with oil policy analyst Antonia Juhas. <laughs> News magazine of the screen. Living glimpses of history in the making. Hollywood and Washington is a symbiotic relationship. They both deal with illusions. Reality doesn't often uh, play much of a part. I think I saw through the myth of the uh, Cold War almost from the beginning. I was a Washington political kid from a political family. Roosevelt first had radio because he had a, this great speaking voice and everyone liked to hear. Truman proceeded to break every arrangement that Roosevelt had set up for a peaceful coexistence. And Truman thought that it would be a good idea. Why not just stay armed all the time? And then he devised the national security state. You've got to go up and swear allegiance to the United States or else you're a commie. I mean, we, were, we had imported fascism. We get Dwight Eisenhower, who said that we have this great military industrial complex. It is a dangerous thing. And he said, this is going to change everything. And the way our country's governed, it's going to change us politically. Along comes Jack Kennedy, who wanted to make his mark, believed in the Cold War. But he said, in this kind of politics, it is the appearance of things that matters. I think everybody should take a sober look at the world about us. The national security state still exists, only it isn't communism anymore, it's terrorism. This is the most serious thing that has happened in the history of the United States. Knowledge is power. We need an honest new system. We need the real news. This is the sort of thing we can build right now without anyone else's permission from the government or from the business community. It's the powers in our hands. If we're not going to sleepwalk into more wars, we think we need to start with a television news network that won't bow to pressure and has the courage to seek facts. And that means independent economics. And that's why we need you. Make a tax-deductible donation now of at least $10 a month or a one-time give of at least $75. As a thank you for your support, we will send you the new documentary film, The History of the National Security State.